Oh no! No! Do we do it? Do we do it? Okay, at this point, I'm not gonna look again. That's it, I'm not going any higher. I'm not looking anymore. Look at how beautiful. Okay, um, we've been waiting outside for an hour and a half. I have been scuttling around the entrance like a creepy little rat. I don't know, maybe I should just pack it up. <laughs> So, okay, let's start from the beginning. Our saga begins when my friend Michael sent me a link to an auction that was happening on this estate sale auction site. He loves browsing around on that site and is always on the lookout for puzzles for me. So on this day, there was this one auction that showed up that had literally like hundreds of different listings and three of them included jigsaw puzzles, but not just any jigsaw puzzles, like really exciting vintage puzzles. So this is the first listing. You can very clearly see three Springbok puzzles, including the prismatic puzzle, which I've been wanting for a really long time, but it's always so expensive on eBay. And the bidding on all of these listings started at one dollar. So I was like, if I can get these puzzles for just a couple of dollars, I will be so happy. But the thing about this estate sale is that there was so much stuff in this house that they didn't really bother to organize any of it. It's like they walked in, didn't change a thing, and were like, all right, this cabinet is one lot, this cabinet is another lot, these shelves are another lot. So it's not like they had one listing for all of the puzzles. Like the puzzles are scattered around in different listings with other stuff included with them. So in this cabinet, you can see there are a couple good puzzles, but also a VHS player, VHS tapes, some random books. It is so annoying that if you're after one thing and somebody else is after another thing, you can be bidding against each other, even though you're not even after the same object. So anyway, the second listing is where so much of the good stuff is. In this first photo, you can see this puzzle. Um, you can't see the title of the puzzle, but as someone who has been you know, very interested in vintage Springbok puzzles. I was so proud of myself that I immediately recognized it. This is a rare Springbok puzzle called Carnival of Harlequin, which goes for like $200 on eBay. So that alone is such a great find, but you can see that there are also mini Springbok puzzles and a whole stack of other vintage puzzles all included in this lot. So again, I was like, if I can get this haul for a couple of dollars, like this is the find of the century. Oh, and clearly the people who ran this estate sale did not know what they had because they call out this cootie game, which is not valuable, and they completely ignore all of the super rare puzzles. And then finally, there was a third auction with some Liberty puzzles and other wooden puzzles. Now, my focus in collecting is not on wooden puzzles. I tend to focus on cardboard puzzles from around the 60s to the 80s. So I was like, all right, if it stays cheap, I'm happy to bid on it, but that's not the one that I'm super focused on. So, okay, the bidding was open for a week. I put in my top bids of like $15 each, and then I just kept checking throughout the week and there was no movement. So I was getting so excited that I might get this huge haul of incredible puzzles for like dirt cheap. But, oh, before we watch the next clip, um, one quick note about how this auction works. You know how on eBay there is a set end time for the auctions, so you just have to get in your bid by that time and then whoever is the highest bidder gets the thing? Well, on this site, if you put in a bid within the last two minutes, it automatically extends the bidding 
for another two minutes. So that means that if you have two people who really want the same thing, they can just keep bidding against each other endlessly until one person gets priced out. So, okay, it is the final night of the auction, the final like 20 minutes of each of these auctions. My friend Michael was actually putting in the bids for me since he already had an account on the site. So in this clip you're about to see, we are on the phone together and you'll just see what happens. Okay, okay, I'm recording. Oh my God, it's up, oh my God, it's up to $47 now. Yeah. Ah, uh, do I want to do it? Ah. Uh. Well, now it's uh, now it's past the fifty dollar mark. But I didn't really want to spend fifty dollars on this one. Now it's up to seventy five dollars. What? Yeah, these have really exploded over the last <laughs> few minutes. What's kind of funny about this auction site is that they don't usually do this. Meanwhile, no movement on the other auctions. We're at four minutes, but the, this one didn't start jumping until right at the very end either. I think I might put in the bid for each of those a little bit before the two minutes comes up so that it doesn't automatically trigger the extension. If you want to put in 50 for each of those, that'd be fine. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, there it goes. No. Oh, okay, the, the Liberty one finally ended at $94. I put $50.95 okay. on the uh, auction number 383 with a three circular spring box. Uh, uh, and we are losing the one that says cootie game. You can put in 70 on that one. Just do it. Oh, oh no. Wow. Yeah, I, I really want this one. Put in 120. Just do it. Just do it. All right. We okay, so bid. we're winning on both of these at the moment, right? Yes. Okay, I'm not going to look. I just can't even look. And for like 30 seconds, I'm not going to look. Stop no. Oh, man, they really want that. Do I want to spend 131? I mean, if we're going all the way out there anyway. Well, it's also worth noting there is a buyer's premium. So if we put in a bid of uh, 140, then it's really more like closer to $160 after the buyer's premium. Oh my God, it just went up again. And it went up again. 20 seconds left on the three spring box. Ah! Okay, okay. This is so stressful. 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Four, three, two, one. <gasps> do we do it? Do we do it? Shaking. I'm literally shaking. Oh, that's a really good value on those. Okay, can you put in 150 on this one? Yes, I can. I hate myself. <laughs> I thought this whole video was gonna be me getting these for like $10 each. <laughs> and now it's just like I'm just buying them on eBay. <laughs> no! Again, who is doing this? I think at this point it makes sense to put in your actual high bid. Um, okay, my high bid is 180. Okay, at this point, I'm not gonna look again. That's it, I'm not going any higher. I'm not looking anymore. I'm just walking away. Okay, I will watch the last 100 seconds of this auction. <laughs> What if they show up at the same time as us and then I find out who they actually are, like when we pick them up? I, I think we will. I think this is all going to be picked up in the same window, if I remember correctly. Ah. I tripped over my microphone. Oh no! 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 No, no I can't go any higher. I think I need to just let them have it. There are some really good puzzles in there. So who's bidding on this lot for $200 now? What do they see? Is it just this one puzzle that they also recognize? I don't know, because I looked up, the thing about that particular puzzle is that I couldn't tell what it was. Uh, so that was the one that I couldn't look up, right? Like yeah. the other ones, like I was able to look up Jungle Birds and Ain't Love Grand and the Grand Tour. So somebody else must just know what this puzzle is and see that it goes for like $200. And so they're paying 200 for the lot to include that. I, I just, I can't, I don't want to spend over $200 on just one lot of puzzles. I can't do it. I already have so no, many puzzles I that I spent, <laughs> I spent so much money on recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that too. All right, they're gonna have it. Four, three, two, one. That's it. We lost it. We didn't get it. I didn't get that puzzle. And it ends at $190. That is steep.
Oh my God, that was so intense. <laughs> so as you saw, I let the wooden puzzles go. Um, they sold for $95 which is still a really good value because even just a single Liberty puzzle can easily cost that amount or way more than that. So getting two Liberty puzzles plus other wooden puzzles, like that's a really good deal. But the big auction, the one with the Carnival of Harlequin, I guess somebody else must have recognized that puzzle or recognized something else in that cabinet of value because I thought, for sure, I was gonna get it for so cheap. And then we just kept bidding against each other and the price just kept going up and up and up and up. It ended up selling for $190. And honestly, once I got there and saw everything that was inside, I should have kept bidding. Like it's worth way more than that. But when I was expecting to pay like $30 and then suddenly in the heat of the moment, I just have to decide if I'm willing to spend $200. Like I just, it was too stressful. I just had to stop. But I did win the auction with the prismatic puzzle. So luckily this one was not as much of a bidding war. Um, my final price that I paid was $28 plus a little bit of extra fees added on. But to get all three of these puzzles for essentially like $35, such an incredible deal. Hi guys, um, editing Karen here. So I realized watching this video back that I spent a lot of time talking about money and the value of all of these puzzles. But I also just wanted to acknowledge the woman who lived in this house and collected these puzzles. Clearly, she loved puzzles and had very good taste in puzzles. I don't know if she passed away or if she was just like downsizing and moving somewhere else, but if she did pass away, it is so awful that a family lost their mother, their grandmother, their sister, like whoever she was. As excited as I was to potentially get access to this puzzle collection, like I would so much rather her family have gotten more time with her. So I'm going to get back to the video where I do get even more detailed about the value of all of these puzzles, which I think is interesting from a collecting point of view. But I just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge the woman who collected them in the first place. I hope that wherever she is, she is happy that three of them went to someone who really appreciates them. So, okay, we won that one auction. We had to go out there to pick up all of our stuff. Uh, the pickup day was the following Saturday. And unfortunately, uh, Michael and I are like the only two people in LA without cars. So we had to call a Lyft to get out there. Uh, we got picked up in a Tesla, which was fun. <laughs> so we get there and we already see people just hauling out boxes and boxes of books. When I tell you there were so many books in this house, we saw three separate people entirely fill up like full-size SUVs just filled with boxes of books and there were still more in the house. Anyway, the day started off great because I immediately got recognized by a viewer, which was really nice. And he actually gave me a puzzle from his lot of books that he had bought. I'm pretty sure it was, I think it was this puzzle, which is not really anything special, but it was just really kind of him to recognize me and give it to me. <laughs> but then it was our turn to check in and go into the house and pick up all of our stuff. Um, you're not allowed to leave anything behind. You have to take everything that is in that lot with you. So while we were in the middle of packing all of that up, um, I may have taken a little peek at the big puzzle lot, which was in the cabinet right next to ours. Oh man, there are the puzzles. Ah. Yes. A little bit of tape. 
It's so pretty though. Ooh, I've never even seen this one before. I couldn't even tell what this was online. Here we go. Ah, it's dirty. Ah, it's gross. Ah, there's spider webs. Gross. <laughs> there it is. The one that I came for. It's so pretty. Oh, I can't wait to find out if all the pieces are here. <laughs> this one is not quite as interesting. And any more puzzles? I think that might be it on the puzzles. No! I was hoping there'd be something secret in here. <laughs> okay, don't tell anyone we're doing this. Look at how beautiful. I want it so bad. I want it so bad. It's so pretty. Yeah, these are the mini spring box. I didn't know they were that little. I've only seen them online before. I can't even tell what the picture is of this one. Oh my god, I didn't even know. It's yellow flash. That one's also valuable. Floating oh, this is the one that I have as a wooden puzzle. I think this is the cardboard version. Oh, I should have just put down the money. I want these so bad. <laughs> So let me break down what all ended up being in that second cabinet once I had a good look at what was inside. Obviously there was Carnival of Harlequin. Uh, as I said, this one can go for about $200. There was the Grand Tour, which is an Eaton puzzle. Uh, this one is not too valuable, maybe like $10, $20, depending on shipping. A puzzle called Ain't Love Grand, which goes for about $30. Jungle Birds, which again goes for about $30. This one you could not see in the auction photos. When I saw that that was in there, I was like, oh my God, what a find, what a find. This is Yellow Flash. I do already have this one, so I wasn't as upset about losing out on that particular one. But on eBay, uh, if it's complete, it can go for anywhere from 60 to $100. Okay, this is the one that I was really upset that I missed out on. Um, you, you can like sort of recognize it in the listing once you know what you're looking for. This is Floating Spectrum from Springbok. And if it looks familiar, it's because I already have the wooden version of this puzzle. And so I would have loved to have also gotten the cardboard version to go along with it. But on eBay, it goes for 90 to $200. Even incomplete, it can go for 50 to $70. So then there's this giant poster puzzle. Um, there were a bunch of different puzzles released under this line. And from the outside, I don't think you can really tell which one it is and I didn't really make a note of that when I was there. There's one on eBay for $35 right now, so we'll just say it's worth around there. Um, I just really don't know if the other ones in this series are any more or less valuable than that. There's also this City of Cincinnati puzzle, which looks like it goes for around $30. And then finally, the mini spring box. Now, some people love collecting these. That is a rabbit hole that I personally have not really gone down, uh, just because I prefer full-size puzzles and it's just like a whole other category of rare and vintage puzzles that you could easily spend so much money on. These can range anywhere from like $3 to $70, and I think I saw six of them in this cabinet, so potentially another huge value right there. So when you add up everything that was in that cabinet, it's a lot. <laughs> I really should have kept bidding. I should have pushed it up to like 250, 300, but you just never know like how far the other person is willing to push it either. But don't go anywhere yet. Our story does not end there. So on this auction site, they would give you a specific pickup window. Ours was on that Saturday from, I think it was like 11.30 to about 4 p.m., something like that. So I decided that we should get there right at the beginning of that pickup window and then just like hang out and see who came to pick up the puzzles. 
Because here's my thinking, since there's so much other stuff mixed in with all of these different lots, maybe the person who bought that one is like a board game collector. Maybe they don't care about the puzzles. Maybe if I meet them in person, I can just buy some of the puzzles right off of them right there. And then they wouldn't have to worry about listing them on eBay or, you know, anything like that. I'm thinking about them here. <laughs> Or even if they weren't gonna sell me any of the puzzles, like if there is another vintage puzzle collector in LA, I wanna know who they are. Maybe we can trade puzzles back and forth. Maybe I could borrow some of their puzzles for some videos. So that was the plan. Um, here's how it actually played out in reality. All right, coming up on half an hour, hanging out here on the sidewalk with all of our treasures. <laughs> waiting for this other puzzle collector to show up. It's about 12.40 right now, and the pickup window goes until four, so we'll see how long we actually decide to wait. Okay, um, we've been waiting outside for an hour and a half. I have been scuttling around at the entrance like a creepy little rat trying to eavesdrop on who's picking up these puzzles and eyeing every single per person who leaves to try to see what they have. <laughs> I feel like at this point, like we're in it, we should just stay the course, but also I'm really bored. <laughs> okay, it is 2.15. They still haven't been picked up. It has now start turned from a very light drizzle to a slightly heavier drizzle. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I should just pack it up. <laughs> okay, it is 2.45. No one new has shown up for a while. So we think the pickup window for today may have ended, so we're gonna call it. It's also like raining, we're gonna go home. I gave them my phone number. If someone comes to pick it up, hopefully that person will call me. If no one picks it up, hopefully the auction people will call me. We're, we'll, we'll just see. <laughs> So after waiting around for hours, getting like sunburned, getting rained on, nobody ever came to pick up the puzzles. There was another pickup window on that Sunday. So if they bought multiple things at the auction, maybe they showed up on Sunday and just picked all of it up together. But it was pretty far from my apartment, so I, and like I had stuff to do. I just couldn't go all the way back out there and spend another full day hanging around outside this estate sale. Also, I'm pretty sure everyone there like thought I was crazy. I was asking everyone if they were there for the puzzles. I did give the guy with like the clipboard, the guy in charge, I gave him my phone number and I was like, if someone shows up for these puzzles, please tell them to call me. Or if no one shows up for these puzzles, please call me and I will happily come get them. But it's been about two weeks and no one has called me. So I, I, I don't know who bought them. I don't know who I was bidding against. This part of the story is a little anticlimactic. <laughs> I do have eBay alerts set up for all of those puzzles. So if they do start showing up on eBay, you know, I'll know about it. But so far, um, Absolutely nothing. Okay, but let's take a look at everything I did get. Let's do a little haul. So first up, we've got this vintage Springbok puzzle called Myth and Fact in the Zodiac. Super cool picture there. Um, this is from 1965. So this one, um, I looked it up on eBay. It goes for maybe 25 to $40. So. Uh, pretty good deal on that. This one is so beautiful. This is the vintage butterflies puzzle. Um, this one is from, there it is. This one is from 1966. And they tell you what uh, species, what, uh, <laughs> what's the word? What type of butterfly all of the butterflies are. This one can go for around $70 on eBay. So really great to just get it you know, packaged in with all the others. And then of course we've got Prismatic. 
Um, I think I'm going to do an entire video next week where I solve this one and find out if any pieces are missing. So I will tell you more information about this one uh, in my next video. There was also this puzzle in that lot. So this one is not particularly like vintage or valuable. To be honest, I don't think I'm even going to do this one. I think it's going to go straight into the giveaway pile because the colors are just so drab, but like this is not my type of puzzle. As I said, I got this one from a viewer um, in line. So I'll probably solve this one over Christmas and then put it into uh, the giveaway pile. This one I also got, I think from someone that we were talking to and uh, I wasn't really sure I wanted to accept it because I don't really do, oh, this, okay, jumbo pieces. Take a look at how jumbo these pieces are. Look at that. Each one is like the size of my hand. I don't know what I'm going to do with this, uh, but you know, it's, it's a puzzle. And then besides that, we also got a VHS player and some VHS tapes with like old basketball games recorded on them. There were these random wooden plates, which are actually pretty nice. I might clean those up and use them. Uh, some random books. We looked up all of these and nothing is really valuable. Uh, these, unless you have like the entire series, it's really not worth anything. Uh, some old yearbooks, which we looked up if anyone famous was at this school that year, but uh, they were not. And then just some random stuff, a National Geographic, an atlas, a drawing pad with nothing in it. So, you know, not a great haul besides the puzzles, but these puzzles more than made up for that entire adventure. So here's what I want to know in the comments. What do you collect and what is the craziest thing that you have done to get one of the items in your collection? Your code word, if you watched all the way to the end, will be prismatic. And stay tuned because I am going to solve this one in my next video. Happy puzzling. Thank you for watching. And I will see you all in the next one. And if you're the person that was bidding against me for those puzzles, please get in touch. I want to know who you are. <laughs>